So today I'm going to talk about 10 things that I dislike about my LS1 Power 240SX. Now, with everything, you're going to have things that you like, you're going to have things that you don't like. Hopefully in the end, uh, the things that you like outweigh the things that you don't like, and it makes it livable. And so far, that's the case that I found with this car. But for today, for this video, I'm going to discuss the things that I don't like about it. Number 10 is that when you're driving the car, you have a tendency to smell like gas. Um, it reminds me of my first car was a 68 Camaro and um, had a big powerful motor in it and every time you drove it, your jacket, your shirt, whatever it was, you smelt like gasoline. Um, it's the same thing with this car. You drive it for a while, you smell like gas. It's just what it is. Uh, for me it's livable but you know you come in the house and people say, eh, you smell like gas. So, you know, that's, I don't like that. I wish because it's um, a closed loop system, I wish that it didn't have that tendency, but it does. So that's number 10. Number nine is the fact that I had to rebuy a lot of parts on the car. Um, when I first got it, I didn't really um, know what direction I was going with. So my first thing was to fix up the car the way it was, and then to address what kind of motor I wanted to put in it. The, uh, the first motor that I got was out of um, Nissan Skyline, and then I backed out of that and I went with the LS1, um, just because of the, the power output, the reliability. So right off the bat, I had two engines for the car. Um, the other thing was I went through uh, three sets of rims with this car. The first set I got were 17 inch rims, and um, I just didn't like them. I just felt, felt the car needed more. So I went and bought a set of 18 inch rims that were 245s, 215s. Um, then I had to replace the rear axles. I had 1000 horsepower axles so that I didn't have to worry about breaking them. And when I got the LSD for it, the LSD was out of a Q45 and that required then a non-optional five lug hub. So the five lug hubs, now I needed new rims again. So I went with the rims that you see here, and it's a squared stance, um, 275, 18 inch rim. Um, and actually in the end, that was a better, a better choice. Um, another thing, I went through three shifters. I first went with a Camaro shifter because you, it's an automatic. And you can see the indicator, drive, reverse neutral. Um, it didn't fit. So then I went and got a Trans Am shifter and that was just the linkage and that fits that's what's in there now i also bought a, a shifter from a c5 corvette which is what i want in it um but that's not yet happened so i do have it um, i went through two different intakes two sets of heads two throttle bodies because of the i had wound up um, building the motor and I needed a 92 millimeter throttle body and 92 millimeter intake. So I got the fast intakes. And um, so the old ones became, became garbage. Um, I went through two cat bat exhausts. The first one was for a stock 240. And when I got the car, the muffler was non-existent and I rotted off. Then, um, so I bought a replacement for that. Then when we dropped the LS1, we had a, a CX Racing um, from the headers back system put in. And for me, the exhaust's a little too loud, um, so I wound up getting another muffler, which has yet to be put on, but it's three inch stainless steel, it'll work fine. Um, number eight is the, the amount of money that I've spent on this. I'm into it for about $30,000 right now. Um, you know, I could have spent another 10 to 15 and gotten a, a Mustang, I could have gotten a Camaro, I could have gotten a Charger. Challenger, uh, but the point is I did not want a car with electric assist, so this is the way I wanted to go, and um, you know, again, I, I regret having to spend that much money because I know a lot of people do it for a lot cheaper. I see, you know, kids in their backyards doing this for, you know, they claim like under 10,000. Um, I'm not convinced that, that those cars are, you know, complete cars at that point. Um, this car has no issues with it, but again, it's a lot of money to spend. Um, number seven is the brakes. I have upgraded brakes out of a 300Z Turbo. And um, while they're much better than the stock 240 brakes, which were crap, um, 
these could still be upgraded. Um, it, it, it stops okay. I think in a panic stop situation though, I wouldn't trust them. You know, it's the type of thing where if you're closing in on traffic and you see the brake lights, yeah, it's fine. But if somebody cuts in front of you or stops short, I don't know that I would trust these um, in that situation to stop in time. Um, number six is the uh, gas mileage. Um, it gets about eight to 10 miles to the gallon on the highway. You can actually watch the gas gauge go down. And you know, the only thing I can remember seeing like that was I had a 1990 GMC Cyclone pickup truck and the, the gas on that was about the same. Um, you know, again, is it something I could live with? Yes. And, you know, would it be maybe better to put a, I don't know, a larger fuel cell in there? Maybe. But um, you just got to keep an eye on it and be ready to dump a lot of money into it when, you're, when it's getting to be empty. Um, the number five thing is the, uh, the power. Um, you got to really remember to respect it. You got to... Um, you know, not take it out in snow or rain, which is obvious, but it's it's one of those things where, you know, if it's a nice, really nice day, it's warm out, yeah, take the car out and have fun. But if it's cold, it's in the 30s, it's in the 20s, like I said, it, it, a little bit of uh, snow on the ground, um, really shouldn't take it out and that kind of sucks because, it, you know, living in New Jersey, um, you get a lot of that. Um, and you can't really forget your surroundings where you are, like if you're getting onto it, and you're coming up on traffic, you gotta kinda remember like, you know, this thing, if you're giving it quarter throttle, it's probably like most cars full throttle. I mean, it's, it's, that, it's that fast. It's got 387 horsepower to the rear wheels and the car weighs under 2,900 pounds. So you gotta really respect it, um, which it's just a matter of keeping that in mind. Um, Number four is the insurance. Right now I have this insured as a stock Nissan 240, which means uh, it's valued at about $1,200. So if that car goes out and gets totaled tomorrow, they're gonna cut me a check for $1,200. The other choice is you go through specialty insurance, you pull up receipts, you tell them what it's worth, um, and then you pay accordingly. Um, and I, I, you know, this car cost me about $400 a year to insure. So to go from that to saying, oh, it could cost you $800 a year, I don't know. I, it it kind of sucks. And right now I am taking my chance and, and hopefully, you know, I'm a very defensive driver and I hope nothing happens to it. Um, if it does, then, you know, that, that's a gamble that you take. Um, number three is that the car still isn't finished. Um, like I had mentioned, I want to put the exhaust on there. Um, if I upgrade the brakes, I'm not even including that. I'm talking about just, um, it needs to go to the body shop. I need to get um, a wide body kit on there because the tires stick out two inches about from the fenders. And I want it to have a more finished look. I, you know, I don't want it to look like, it kind of looks like a piece of crap, which there's some point to that that's fun because it makes the car very unexpected. Um, but it's going to the body shop. It's gonna be painted paper white. Um, I have the body kit put on it. I got side skirts. I got a front and rear bumper. It'll be painted. Um, and the uh, the number two thing, which we'll take a listen to now, is the exhaust. Basically, this car is straight piped, um, and I don't want to be that obnoxious guy in the neighborhood that has a car that starts at seven o'clock in the morning and everybody talks about, you know, here's this guy again starting his car, um, and I don't want um, to be drawing attention to myself from cops or whoever. So I'd like uh, like a 25% reduction. Uh, I think that would still sound really good. Um, let's take a listen to that. I think once that's done, uh, it'll make the car a lot better to drive as far as having, drawing attention to you.
then the number one thing that I dislike about it is um, the unknown, the reliability factor. Um, you know, on paper everything should be fine. The entire drivetrain is brand new. I said the brakes are new, the exhaust is new. Um, right now everything works on it, everything. Um, but for how long? You know, and um, you know, I, I'd like to be able to drive it long distances, whether that means just going an hour to a racetrack or taking it to Pennsylvania to drive on the roads. Um, and you just don't know if something's gonna break or not on it. Um, then the other point is that, that the um, speed shop that installed it, if God forbid one day they go out of business, you know, who works on it? Do you take it to a Chevy shop? Do you take it to a Nissan dealer? Um, you know, it's, that's a factor. Um, I think if I lived on the West Coast, where there's a speed shop like, you know, every mile, it wouldn't have been a problem. But for me, it, um, you know, it's something I think about. I mean, I, I don't think there's gonna be a problem with the car. I think everything was well done, it was professionally done, but it's in the back of your mind. And anyway, um, again, to conclude, that is my top 10 things that I don't like about my LS1 powered 240SX. Thanks for watching and I will catch you later.